So, who in this audience believes that the digital revolution will decrease our social relations? In other terms, who is afraid that we might become some kind of digital zombie? So, I see many hands. So those who raised their hands, and those who didn't dare to do so, you must listen to me. For all the others, you can continue. <laughs> now, this was my office not so long ago. And I can see some gray hair, and therefore, this must talk to you as well. Now, this was difficult to carry around and impossible to share. Luckily, all of this has disappeared. It has dematerialized. Even the desk has become obsolete. The desk of my children is their bed. Now, unfortunately, it has also become the dining kitchen or kitchen room, <laughs> if you see what I mean. Now, where has the desk gone? Obviously, this is the new desk. And everything that you have seen, and much more, has been reincarnated in this object. Now, obviously, it made us mobile. But not only. It created an amazing space between us where we can share massively information in whatever form. You can even talk to people on the other side of the planet, looking at them. Something for me, very curious, because it only happened in Star Trek series when I was young. Much more is to come. There will be more connected objects next year than inhabitants on Earth. That also means that you can kind of talk to your coffee machine in the next years. Dematerialization will continue as well. And instead of staring on a TV screen passively, you could become active creators of content and beam it up onto any surface. Now, objects decorative objects, familiar objects, they can be re-dematerialized on an ultra-high resolution hologram. And with a little bit of imagination, you could imagine anything you want. You can also own anything you want. You could have a Mona Lisa at home if you wanted to. And in one click, you can share whatever you like. Now, obviously, the digital revolution is about sharing and about dematerialization. But not only. There is another trend, which is disintermediation. Obviously, you don't go to the bank anymore because the bank comes to you in many different ways. And how boring can a lecture be at university? I know I shouldn't say this here, because we're in a university. But when I was at medical school, I had no time to attend any of those lectures. Now, I have never told this to my patients for obvious reasons. <laughs> but how was, why was this possible? Because a few students recorded the lectures. But you know the real recorders, the tape recorders. They typed it on these type, typewriters. And they copied it on real paper. Well, actually, this size by the end of the year. And they sold it for real money. They actually were the precursors of the massive online courses. Who is still going to a travel agent? 
okay. <laughs> One, that must be a bad internet connection. <laughs> now, obviously, one size fits all will also be history pretty soon. Because you will be able to have exactly your size by sending in on internet your 3D shape of your body. Obviously, you could cheat a little bit, but not much. Now, what is the first thing that people do when they feel sick? The first thing they do is it to go to consult a doctor? Not anymore. They consult internet. Because on internet, you can find 100,000 applications and websites which are dealing with, with health and well-being. Now, this can be either hell or haven for hypochondriacs, of course. I could go on and on with these type of examples. Translators, for example, will be an extinct species pretty soon. Now, what this shows is that we will be more empowered with this new technology and that we will become one of a kind and not, not just one among many. There is yet something else to come. I call this recentration. It is made possible not just because of the digital revolution, but because of the confluence of many other technologies. In our modern lives, there are so many things we have lost control over. But we could regain power over it. Take energy, for example. We have discovered that the sun and wind can make us more autonomous for, elect for electricity. The next step will be hydrogen fuel cells, which will make us even more autonomous. Take also water. You could collect water from the sky, especially in this country, I can tell you. <laughs> uh, and you could indefinitely recycle it. And why not giving a second life to the waste with bioreactors? Food. Why don't we have just flat roofs where we could have urban gardening? Not only would you have fresh vegetables, but you could connect much better with your neighbors. And again, recycling would also be beneficial. Another example, leisure. With virtual reality, leisure will be completely changed. You can imagine that you could, for example, co-create games between you. Because serious gaming is the best way to learn. Manufacturing, packaging, shipment can be reduced drastically by 3D printing. A lot of devices are already affordable for private use. And here as well, you could be very innovative and you could imagine to build anything you want, anything you like. And once you're fed up with it, you either exchange it or you just recycle it with the same printer. Advancements in biotechnology and sensors will help us to shift from a health system which is concentrated on treatment towards something more preventive and predictive. The same home monitoring will help elderly people to stay much longer in their home. And so will also the advancements in robotics and artificial intelligence. Now think of it. By the mid of this century, there will be nearly 500 million people over 80 years old. Finally, the car, well, the car. Imagine 20 years from now, 
when our children think about us, or the grandchildren, for some of you, they will say, how could they spend 150 billion hours a year in Europe only, sitting in a car and just staring at the road? Obviously, progress can be made as well. One self-driving car could replace 10 regular cars if we believe that sharing and pooling is the solution. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what I would like to say with this advancement in technology is that we have a unique opportunity to change from a passive consumer to an active citizen. This same technology will help us to care more about us, about others, and about the environment. In one sentence, it will make us better human. But what does it actually mean to be a human? That needs a little bit of backwinding. What was before the digital age? Well, the Stone Age, in short, I admit. Uh, since the dawn of humanity, our genes tell us that we have to have things that we have to own to survive. Obviously, already at that time, there were some increments. Some had more than others, like the laces of fur fashion or the Picassos of that time. The same genes also tell us that we are a social animal and we, ha we need time to stay together and to have a good time. That's exactly what we do right here and right now with the exception that the organizers didn't want to have a fireplace between you and me. Uh, it must be a misunderstanding, because I thought about a virtual one, an hologram, a digital fire, but anyway. Over time, there was an imbalance between the having and the being, or the having and the sharing. And I let you guess which way it went. You can probably guess here that one of these chaps is not so happy. It's because he's looking down. He's looking down because he's focused on having. The more he has, the more he wants. And the more he wants, the more he needs to take from others. He lives in the material world. The other one is more happy, or tends to be, he's looking up. His world is sharing, and the more he shares, the more he gets from others. And he prefers the virtual world. So what I want to say is that the advancements in science and technology, and especially the digital revolution, can make us bet more humane than ever before if we just choose to have less and to share more. Thank you.